Hey guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the seven most important tools that you need if you're a beginner fly tire. We're gonna cover all seven of them, go through everything, and uh, hopefully get rid of some of the confusion that is uh, commonly found whenever you're just getting into fly tying. There's a lot of stuff out there and uh, we're gonna help break it down for you. Stay tuned, we're gonna dive into everything right now. My name's Levi. I've been tying flies for the past 18 or so years, and uh, I've probably been teaching people how to tie flies for the last 15 or so of those years. I've learned quite a bit in that time and uh, really understand what excels when, what tools you're gonna use in what situation, what tying techniques, all of that fun stuff. And if you pay attention to our YouTube channel, then you may recognize my voice because I do all the fly tying on there as well. So if you have questions for me, feel free to drop those below. As you guys can see, Got a whole lot of tools in front of us, and if you notice one thing that's missing, that's the vise. And the reason that's not here, because we're gonna do a whole video on vices, break down the makes and styles, and that video will be coming soon. So if you're on the market for a vise, be sure to uh, look out for that. So we're gonna get started with the bobbin. That's the uh, one of the most important tools out there. It's used to wind your thread, keep tension on your thread, and uh, makes things really easy. For the beginner tire, I recommend this right bobbin, which has tension adjustability. As you can see, we have a little wheel here, and uh, one of the major problems, especially with beginner tires and even more seasoned tires, is you break your thread because there's too much tension on the bobbin. You don't really have it figured out. This gets rid of that. Super easy to use, just unwind it and uh, that'll set your tension and this is a great tool it's worth the uh, added cost just to get rid of the frustration of breaking the thread if you want to go the more economic route here's a standard bobbin two balls right here that pull apart stick your thread in there and that keeps everything nice and secure you will notice we have a ceramic tube up here i highly recommend going with a ceramic tube bobbin because that is going to prevent your thread from fraying if you have a metal one you might run into some trouble there and it's really just not worth the headache it's not that much more expensive it might even be the same price these days so ceramic bobbin great tool to have if you really want the sort of the cadillac of bobbins go with the right one for that adjustability. It's a great cho choice. And after the bobbin, we're gonna move into a bobbin threader. Really simple tool, essentially just threads your bobbin. You put it through the tube and pull your thread right through the, uh, the middle there and you can pull this right back through the bobbin. One of the most important tools, pretty much impossible to tie a fly without a pair of scissors. And you will notice if you just are blindly looking at them online, there are quite a few options of scissors these days. What I would suggest, have a couple different kinds. If you're just getting started, an all-purpose scissor like this from uh, Dr. Slick is a really great option. It's good for fine work as well as you can get into some more coarse stuff, maybe some small bucktail streamers. It's a really good option for an all-purpose pair of scissors. A little better option is these tension adjustable scissors from Dr. Slick tension adjustability right here. They have nice large loops for your fingers so they fit nicely and uh, you'll see pretty fine point. They also taper to get a little wider down here, cut some larger materials with it, a little more coarse uh, you know, materials. And if you're wholly into tying, maybe say with synthetics, SF fiber, EP fiber, that sort of thing, spinning deer hair, you need something that really grasps these uh, synthetic scissors are great. Just like the other two, which I neglected to mention, they do have a serrated finish. The serration on this one, a lot bigger, and that really lets you get in there and uh, cut everything. It gets a good bit of purchase to, the, uh, to your cuts. Great choice for those who are looking to tie larger flies with synthetic fibers that'll dull the more uh, fine and usually tend to be more expensive scissors like this. Again, like I said, it's a great idea to have a number of different scissors available at your tying desk. Some for your fine-tuned work, some for your larger, more coarse material. That way you don't rip through scissors really quickly. Number four in the list of uh, beginner fly tying tools is the bodkin. Super important tool. I use this thing almost as much as my scissors. It's essentially a pointed needle on the end of a half-hitch tool. You will notice there's a half-hitch tool there. 
really convenient for just throwing a half hitch anytime in the fly, the head of the fly, wherever you may be. It's just a nice addition to the bodkin. But to talk about the bodkin, great for freeing trapped fibers. Say you palmered a hackle and uh, the stem wound over, some of the fibers get in there, pick it right out. You crowded the hook eye, you need to, uh, you know, take some thread off there, get in there, free it up. Or you have head cement in there, any number of uh, issues with the hook eye, great tool to get rid of it. It's a really convenient thing to have on the desk. And uh, what I tend to do is keep a film canister with some steel wool in there and just poke that bodkin in there. That way it stays clean, you can get it in there and uh, get any sort of head cement buildup or UV resin, which this is great for applying UV resin. You really get in there and level everything out. It's a really nice, nice tool to have on the desk. I would highly recommend having one, if not two. It's just a standard bodkin and uh, it works really well. Again, that half inch tool is a nice addition for the beginner fly tire. Number five in the list is the whip finisher. Two separate options of whip finisher here. In the uh, this one right here, Mattarelli whip finisher. This is the most commonly used one, I think. Super easy. You uh, can finish your fly with this. You can put a whip finish midway through. This is a very easy thing to do. Makes securing the head of your fly nice and uh, without hassle. It's also a very good securing knot. Thompson whip finisher ties essentially the same knot. It's just a little different design, as you can see. Some people prefer this. I prefer the Mattarelli, but again, we all have our you know, preferences whenever it comes to choosing the tool. Both are great choices for the beginner fly tire. Moving right along, number six, hackle pliers. Again, two separate options. Standard hackle plier right here, and the rotating hackle plier. These are used to wind hackle, wind, you know, stubby materials, maybe some chenille, yarns, that sort of thing. Both of them serve a purpose, and I do think the rotating hackle plier tends to be a little simpler for the uh, beginner tire. As you can see, it does rotate, so you simply place your material in there, and as you'll see, a little heat shrink tubing on the uh, end there, that'll prevent materials from breaking, being damaged while you wind them. But you just put your material in there and then the rotating function pretty much does the rest of the work for you. It's really easy. Should you want to go the more economic route, this is also a great option. Again, tension keeps uh, everything in place there. You just have to push it open and then let your material get in there and then just wind it. And it's pretty self-explanatory, but again, they're a good, good uh, tool to have on the bench, especially for the beginner tire who doesn't quite have the dexterity that you get over years of tying experience. Last but certainly not least, the hair stacker. It's a great tool, especially for those who like to tie flies like the stimulator, elk hair caddis, those sorts of things. This is used to even hair. So if you have a bunch of, say, elk hair, you want to even all the uh, tips, make sure they're nice and straight and all uniform with one another. This is the tool to do it. It, it makes your life a lot easier. This is a pretty simple one by Griffin, I believe, but you'll notice it is adjustable. So you can get a little extra length out of that. Say you're working with some bucktail that's a little longer or something like that, and you wanna stack and even that. This gives you a little bit of uh, extra length to that that you kinda wouldn't get otherwise. So that's a nice feature on here. Again, super easy tool to use just Put the uh, fibers in there, tip down, tap it on the table, and you pull it out, everything will be nice and straight. It's a good tool to have on the desk. It really makes things nice and neat. So if you're one of those guys that likes everything to look a certain way, it's a good one to have. I want to thank you guys for watching, and this is seven tools for the beginner fly tire. And stay tuned because we're going to have more uh, videos from this series dropping that goes through just some basic stuff for beginners. So feel free to drop any questions below. And uh, if you don't want to miss any of these videos, definitely hit that subscribe button. And all of these tools that we talked about today are available at tridentflyfishing.com. And we'll go ahead and link everything down below so that you can uh, make it easy on you guys. And all orders over $49 do ship for free. So if you're looking to stockpile yourself a fly tying kit, it's a great way to do it and save on some shipping costs. We'll see you next time.